So today we're going to be talking about ground quality. Yeah, when I first started I had to do a Google search too. Sounds very fancy. Basically what it means is the ground in which we're going to apply our artwork. So canvases, paper, quite a lot of mediums will um, actually go on a variety of things out of the traditional. You could do wardrobes, um, you can do shoes, leather. There's a lot of unique ways in which you can apply mediums. What we're going to be talking about today are the traditional ones. Not so much toilet walls, they frown on that. So for those of you that use colour pencils, pastels and graphite, I have a variety here, just excuse me while I look them all over, of different papers. Now this isn't a comprehensive guide, if I sat here and listed every paper that was ever produced, I wouldn't get out for the next 20 years and to be honest this thing's taking me about 20 takes as it is so add another 20 years I, I think I'll just stick to the ones that are my go-to's so excuse the pronunciation because I am renowned for pronouncing things wrong I went to London and was calling the River Thames the Thames yeah I wouldn't mind but I am incredibly intelligent at times Sometimes I just have the most senior, blondest moments you have ever, ever imagined. However, it makes living with me quite good fun. If you see any, comment nicely or just ignore them because I'm sure there'll be quite a few of them. We call them Vickyisms. Okay, so this is the Ingress or Ingress again, look. And this is a pastel paper, and I've just managed to show you the tracing paper in between. And it comes and it's got quite a cross hatched effect, so it has got a bit of a tooth, a bit of a texture there. It comes in, see if we can get this, a variety of different colours, some of which you'll probably find you use quite often, others you look at and think, oh my lord, what am I going to do with that? This little book here is dead handy for um, smaller formats, different um, things like ACOs and postcards. Um, it's a 160 GM2. Right, so many of you are going GM2. So basically, GM2 or GSM is gram per square meter or grams per meter square. Basically, this means the thickness of the paper. All you need to remember is higher the number, thicker the paper, jobs are good. Oh, sorry, I just have to show you just been interrupted by three of these. This one's Coco. She's the puppy of the pack. And I was trying to talk to everybody and my door started to open itself. <laughs> you wanna come up and say hello Guinea? Come on then. Here's number two. This is Guinness because she was born on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, I know, but you have to go down now. And um, Cinnamon's doing a runner. Come on. Come on, Sin. Oh, and this is the bulky one. This is Cinnamon, who is not purebred to our. She's part Jack Russell, and therefore thinks she's a rock fighter. Okay, so the next one I've got is, again, pronunciation, Murano. This one's had a, an incident with the ink. Um, and this one is 160 GM2. And it comes again in the different colours. And again, it's got that sort of cross-hatched effect to it. You probably can't really see it on the camera, but you can hear it. Okay, so the last one in the pastel pads that I have is another Ingress. Again, pronunciation could be completely off mark. And this one is 90. 90 there. In uh, grams per meter squared. And again, has the cross hatch. Now, all of these papers will work with graphite, coloured pencil, and also pastels. My next... Oh, this is one of my favourites. Do you remember when you were a kid and you used to have those... Um, 
stupid little sticky things and they were like um, hats, gloves and scarves and they went on like a velour pad, it was like a green thing and you spent hours playing on them and now you look at it and think, what? Well, this is a bit like it. Now I've seen it in large formats before, large sheets, um, and they're easy enough to obtain online. But I've not really ever come across a pad format. I could be completely wrong, but this is the one that I found. It was from um, the Society of All Artists website. And it's big Bear Cross. I may have just renamed him. I think that's how you pronounce it. Bearcroft. <laughs> it says on the back. So, sorry. Vic Bearcroft. I did just rename him. Thought that might happen. Okay, so in this, there's 10 sheets. Um, it's 260 GSM. 120 pounds apparently um, and there's five of the sandy colour and five of the light grey and it really is oh, it's lush you can it's like uh, you have to stroke it it's just I, I don't even know whether I can show you on the camera but it is it, literally the law paper and it is fantastic if you have a look he's amazing if you have a look Again, it might just be shiny. For doing fur and feathers, you get that really soft, you know where you just want to stroke something on a piece of paper? That may just be me that thinks that way. Um, I'm hoping other artists feel the same. Okay, so the next two I have to talk to you about are um, smooth papers. Um, again, these are my go-to, um, but they do come with a sort of, not a cautionary tale, but just a, a, a thing to bear in mind. Okay, so this is the Bristol board. 250 GSM and it is a smooth, what is known occasionally as a cartridge paper and it's just quite smooth. Uh, well, it's very smooth in fact. I reckon you could play high top with it or even ice Um And the next one is the Camford. I'm hoping that's how you pronounce the name. And this one is 150 GSM. And this is the black paper. Okay, so with the Bristol board and with the black paper, particularly with the black paper because of the GSM being that little bit lower, if you're going to be using this for coloured pencils, obviously I don't recommend the black for graphite, that won't really work, and it certainly, neither of them will really work for pastels because there's no tooth or texture for the pastels to adhere to. Um, but they are both great for coloured pencils. However, with the with both of them, because of the smoothness, you can only get so many layers of the coloured pencil down. Which is fine, but it is something to consider because you can overwork the paper. Sounds very fancy again. Basically this means when you're halfway through a piece, you get a walking great big hole in it. And quite a few blue words are said and you make pretty confetti. So, now with the black... Black is a really um, nice paper to use for fur. It gives fur a, a bit of a depth. However, it will dull your coloured pencils, as in your yellow won't be quite as bright as it is on the white paper. So, we've talked about DSM. The next thing we need to talk about is hot and cold press. So, cold press basically means it's a rougher textured paper. With the hot press, basically that's the, the cartridge papers, the hot press are the smoother ones and the cold press are the bumpier ones, that's the best way to remember it. I've got two other papers to discuss with you and these are my absolute, absolute favourite for colour pencils which is probably one of my favouritest, and yes that is a word, mediums. Um, colour pencils are something that I got into because Apparently I make a mess everywhere. Anyway, here's the paper. So 350 GSM, this is Archer's watercolour paper. Again, it comes in the large sheets, hence the reason I'm not showing you, because it's like A1 or something redonkulous. And then, um, this is a new purchase actually. Um, I've only had it um, a week. Um, it's the Stonehenge paper. Can't for the life of me remember what the GSM is. Um, I'll have to have a look at that for you on my invoice wherever I placed it. Um, and I'm finding this, it's got a little bit of a texture, but nowhere near as much as the archers. Um, I really, I'm really liking this. I've gotten loads and loads and loads of layers on this paper. 
um, and yet I've not got the sort of bumpy tooth to deal with too much. The Archer's one has quite a, a raised tooth, it's not massively, we're not talking sandpaper, um, and I find that, I, I really like that one too, uh, particularly for the little ACOs, you probably can't see them, they're probably a bit far away. Um, you know, you can get loads and loads and loads of layers on without putting holes in your paper. Marvellous. So, the next one I have to talk to you about is not um, a paper. As you're probably aware, or if not, you will be now, um, I quite like um, my airbrush. I particularly like my dust mask. No, I don't really. Um, anyway, so um, for airbrushing, this is what I tend to use. Oh. This is where I can't really get anything in, in shot. And it's the Saunders Waterford Hot Pressed Matte Grain Finished Board. Um, I'll try and show you the board. It's a little bit doggy because it sits underneath my airbrush stand. And you see it's, it's cut, you know, it's, well you could do a bit of that jobby with it. I'll show you where that came from. Um, and it's really nice for the airbrush because there's not too much of a, a tooth to it so that you don't get all that speckled hen look and not the beer variety either. Um, what we've got to bear in mind with the airbrush is the higher the tooth on the paper or the board or whatever it is you're using, the more of a speckled effect you get. The reason for this is the airbrush is a very fine spray. Right, dancing. Um, a very fine spray of paint. So what happens is, I'm doing it again, I'm directing traffic, you spray over and where you've got the little grooves, your paint won't go in, so you get this sort of speckled effect. Now if that's what you're going for, if you were doing something like the Cosmos, you could paint um, first and then spray over with a different colour and you would get that speckled effect. But if that's not really the look you're going for, then best to stay away from the textured papers. So when it comes to acrylics and oils, Again, they're pretty indestructible, you can put them on most things. Obviously, I would advise that you stick to canvas board, um, which I've just shown you the watercolour board, that would be perfectly fine. Um, you can get the equivalent um, with the canvas on. And again, um, these vary in the smoothest of the texture that you can get. You can use these for the airbrush, but again, the smoother the better. If you want to do a combination, that's what I would recommend. Um, but um, you've got the canvas boards and you've got the canvases and those are absolutely fantastic for, for either or medium. You can buy the canvas in sheet form, again I don't have any in stock, in like a pad. So if you're wanting still to frame, um, or, or your customer to frame um, the artwork, you can go at it that way. Basically all we've got to remember, in layman's terms or in Vickyisms, is that the airbrush doesn't like bumpy paper, the colour pencils love bumpy paper, but they also like the smooth, pastas need a little bit of bump, um, hot press is the smooth paper, cold press is the bumpy, um, GSM or GM2, however it's written on your pad or whatever you're purchasing, the higher the number, the thicker the paper. And pretty much the only other thing I can sort of advise is if you do go, I think, to the Society of All Artists and also Jackson's um, Art Supplies Online, and I'm sure there's other places too, um, they do do um, like a little trial pack. So um, depending, um, I think some of them do like a cold press pack and a hot press pack. Um, others do like an archer's pack um, or um, you know a Stonehenge pack or what, whatever it might be but some of them do them by brands, some of them do them by um, the press but you can get little sample packs um, which is great. I recommend buy as many as you can you can afford um, and give them a whirl. With the smooth papers, if you're a bit worried about putting a hole in them, I recommend you just scribble um, and see how many layers you can get over the top and then at least you've got a rough idea in your head at what point the paper starts to rip. You can actually tell it starts to almost pull the coloured pencil off and at that point you're at the point where it's starting to get to the point of no return and you will be scuppered, basically. 
So I think that pretty much covers it. We've gone over the ground quality. I will put all the links to um, as many of the papers I can find. I will certainly put the names of them down where I can type them and not have to pronounce them. Um, I will put a couple of the places that I do prefer to get my um, equipment from but again I'll be reviewing that at a later date in a different video. So I'll put everything down below. Um, hope you enjoyed, hope it's been useful and please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you next week.